Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about how I made the outpost model. This is for the game Atlas Empires, the project I'm currently working on, which you can find out more in the link in the description. Also in the description you'll find links to playlists about how to texture paint going from sort of beginner level to advanced. There's a beginner's course playlist and there's a playlist on Atlas Empires and the work that I've been doing for it. This will be a general overview of how I made this model and painted it, but there's more specific tutorials that I'll try and link to, but most of those, like I say, are in the basics of painting playlist, so do check those out. So you can see that I've started in sculpt mode here, because I chose to sculpt the base of the sort of mountain cliffside thing that it is. Uh, you can see more about this in the links in the playlist about uh, detailed painting, and I go through how I created this sort of rock side uh, or rock face. It's difficult to say what it is because it's not really a mountain, is it? Because it's too small to be a mountain, but it's mountain in terms of its rocky shape. So there we go. <laughs> so do check out that other link if you want a detailed breakdown of how I made that. Still get a few questions about what kit I'm using. I do have other videos about that as well. And I've got graphics, tablets, suggestions in the description. And I've done some recent reviews of graphics tablets, so you could check those out as well. Um, I really liked the XP pen, I thought it was fantastic, a good display tablet and quite a good price at the moment so it's well worth having a look at that. So onto the sort of box modelling side of it and uh, this is sort of just basic low poly work. It's fairly simplistic, trying to keep everything as low poly as possible as I always uh, say and talk about. Uh, but you can see here, uh, desperately trying to keep the polys down as much as I can and even thinking about uh, removing faces that aren't seen uh, in the minor gaps and places. So with the cylinder, you can see that I delete the end faces of the cylinder. And not in this particular case, because they're pointing out, but at the bottom there, I think I delete the face. So just those minor tweaks make a tiny bit of difference over lots of different models, because this is just uh, one of five, I think, in this set, but most sets are 10 models. And if I'm copying and pasting that useless polygon each time, it soon adds up. So trying where possible to reduce the polys uh, as much as I can. And generally speaking, I go for a sort of box model approach. So start with a cube and uh, pull things out, add loop cuts. Sometimes I start with a plane and just build it up slowly, like it's kind of a panel or something along those lines. And you can see here where the shapes are overlapping each other a bit. Uh, then I go in and delete the polygons in the shape that's not needed. Hopefully that makes sense. So in the mountain, in this case, there's a big sort of uh, doorway in front of it. So I delete the polygons in the background of that. And I use the knife tool to sort of cut out the section for that model or that part of the model anyway. I'm doing the sort of uh, support beams here. Now you can see that these do overlap slightly. I don't worry too much about that. Uh, it's too complicated and it'll be adding too many polys to sort of sort that out as it were. Um, so it's actually just easier to have them overlapping and not worry too much about one, the texture space and two, the polygons that are taken up. Uh, it's more about texture space as I've talked about before. Uh, so these are all on 512 by 512 textures. So it's quite hard work and sometimes you do actually see the pixels if you zoom in quite close. Uh, but uh, that's the limitations of the models. And th that's sometimes what you're going to get as an artist. You're, you've got constraints to work within. Uh, so you've always got to understand that you can't always have your own way with uh, massive texture sizes, lots of polygon counts and things like that. And you do I see uh, every now and again see sort of tutorials out there talking about game modeling and they're really high poly and it just seems silly. Um, it, you, you can go fairly high poly these days uh, with games, but uh, you do have to be a bit careful and it's, uh, there's no point in overdoing it where you don't need to. So here I'm kind of organizing the model into groups, uh, repeating shapes as much as I can so I can save on the texture space and also it makes it faster to paint. So if I'm uh, duplicating certain models and I use Alt D, so a link duplicate, so the UVs are all copied and I only need to unwrap it once. Uh, and then I sort of group them all together. It's much faster when you're doing that uh, because it's uh, in terms of the painting, it's uh, you only have to uh, paint once, you only have to unwrap once, uh, and any uh, minor adjustments that you make to it with a link duplicate, it will update it with all of them. And you can see here, I'm just going through adding all these different things to different groups uh, because they all have to be separate because they're colored in with different textures. Um, I think that would have been possibly slightly easier to have some sort of way of doing that in Unity, maybe taking it and then adapting the color space somehow, but 
um, it sounded like it was going to be too complicated. So, And speed is really important at the moment. We need to get the models done and the game's going to be ready for early next year. So uh, the whole process is uh, very fast. Uh, so um, thinking of uh, ways to particularly optimise one aspect is quite hard. Uh, so generally speaking, it, you, you go with simplicity uh, for the sake of a tiny bit of processing power. So you can see me going through the unwrapping process here, uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible, uh, cutting things up uh, and removing any sort of extra polygons that I don't need. Uh, but generally speaking, trying to go for sort of nice uniform shapes. So uh, it's not the best unwrap as it were, but it doesn't matter when you're texture painting. So I suppose in a sense for texture painting, it's the best unwrap. And all I'm doing is trying to find nice, easy shapes to work with that will fit on my texture map in an easy, simple way. So if it's going around a corner or if it's an L shape or something like that, then that's quite awkward for my texture space. So I have to watch out for that. And you can see every now and again, I'm sort of looking across at the polygons on the left hand side or the UV area on the left hand side, making sure that it's nice and uniform. I've sped this up to a fairly high amount. It's about uh, t times 20, uh, so 20 times. So there's quite a lot of work going into these uh, separate models. The painting aspect I've slowed down a little bit because uh, I think it just goes a bit too quick when I'm uh, going at that speed, but the modelling is fairly straightforward so you can kind of get a good idea of what I'm up to. Again this painting of the mountain bit, um, I talk in detail about that in another tutorial so uh, do check that out if you want a more detailed approach. And uh, in that playlist there's things like rope, rocks, wood and so on. So uh, have a look at that for a really specific guide. I'm just giving a very rough overview of how I made these things in this particular video and this particular playlist in fact. It took me a fair bit of time to uh, paint the mountain. It was really good fun. I'm really enjoying the texture painting. There's something fun and I don't know what it is. It's really compelling. And you just sit there sort of tinkering away. And it's quite a slow process. I suppose maybe if I were a better artist, it would be a bit quicker. Uh, but uh, I am where I am and uh, I'm enjoying the experience, improving my texturing ability. And the more I do, the more uh, I better I get, I suppose. Uh, so I'm really enjoying the fact that I am improving uh, slowly over time. Uh, and uh, that my work is being appreciated. That's, uh, I suppose that's what we all want as artists and we want our work to be seen and loved and enjoyed uh, by lots of different people. So it's an exciting prospect that I get to work on uh, what I'm hoping will be uh, quite a high profile game. It really does sound like a great idea this game, sort of a cross between Clash of Clans and uh, Pokemon Go sort of style. Uh, it's it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of it to be honest. Uh, is I, I'll have to wait and see and when it uh, starts getting closer to release exactly how it's all going to work. But I'm very excited for it. I think it's going to be really great. Do also comment below about any questions you have. Um, I, I try and, I'm looking at all the comments, of course. I'm trying to think of uh, different questions that I've had, and it's difficult to re, sort of re go over them because there's lots of comments there and things. Uh, so if I'm not answering one of your questions, then ask it again, and then I'll remember for next time. Uh, but uh, some interesting questions uh, coming up. Most of them are just about uh, the process, which is quite hard to know what happens to my models after I've sent them off. So I've obviously sent off an, an OBJ file in this case. Uh, because that's what they preferred. Uh, so an OBJ file and the texture file that goes with it. So there's one texture file and you can see it in the bottom right there, uh, the texture file building up. So I've got one of those and then uh, each of the models as an FBX. And there were sort of certain stipulations like uh, it has to be, the origin has to be at the center of the world, that sort of thing, and the center of the model, no, sorry, the base of the model at the center. Uh, so uh, things like that, sort of fairly obvious things really. Um, but uh, generally speaking it's going very well, I don't really get many sort of uh, corrections to be made uh, so they're very pleased with my models but occasionally it will come back and say oh there's a face the wrong way around so my normals are facing in the wrong direction and of course when you're in Unity uh, or whatever game engine that you're using it doesn't see from both sides, it will only see one side of the texture and the other side will be invisible uh, whereas a blender you can see both sides so uh, you get caught out a bit like that and I've made quite a few mistakes like that and sometimes just made mistakes like exporting two models on top of each other and hadn't noticed. I try and check it all in Unity but sometimes I'm rushing a little bit and sending them off uh, assuming that I've <laughs> exported them correctly because that should be the easy bit but uh, it's surprising how many silly mistakes one can make so uh, watch out for those things. 
You should be able to see by now the format that I use for texture painting, block in the main color. So that, um, in the case of this wood, it's sort of a slightly orangey wood, I would say. So I've got that sort of texture. Uh, then I sort of go along the grain and sort of do some stripes. And once I've got that base down, that's when I start filling in the actual planks, as it were. So put in a very dark line and then sort of lighter lines around them. And you can see me painting the, the sort of metal uh, door frame there. So they were sort of very sharp highlights for metal. More wood here. So going over, uh, there's sort of a knot in the middle uh, of rope. I think I separate that in the end. Nope, no, I just isolate it. Uh, you can do that, it's fairly straightforward. You can isolate uh, faces and just paint on those. You do have to sort of blur the edges because it's very sharp edges when you isolate the faces. So you get between one face and another that you've isolated. Uh, you, you sometimes have to just go in and blur that a little bit. Uh, so you can see a uh, more detailed tutorial about how to paint rope. So I was quite pleased with how the rope came out actually. So uh, I, th I thought I'd do a focus tutorial on that um, because it's the first time I've done rope, weirdly. <laughs> You'd think it would come up all the time in fantasy, but it's mainly just sort of wood and rocks and uh, stone and metal. Uh, so rope was uh, an interesting one. The way, if I haven't painted something before, the way I'd go about it is to uh, first find lots and lots of reference images, uh, then look at how other people have uh, tackled it. So uh, great examples are things like World of Warcraft and Clash of Clans as well. Uh, so this is a sort of similar style to what I'm doing here. So I look at how those artists approach it uh, and then try and uh, either sort of mimic their style or find my own adaptation of that. And generally speaking, it's always the same sort of approach, which is, uh, again, block out the colors, uh, draw out the shape uh, with a darker color, as if you're sketching, uh, and then fill in the highlights. And it seems to be working quite well. The difficulty is uh, knowing how detailed to go, and I think I'm probably going a bit over detailed with a lot of these models, but I'd rather do that than under detailed, certainly. Uh, so they're quite, uh, the minuscule details that you can see here probably aren't going to be noticed so much in the game. They're all noticed in a sense, but uh, not so much from a distance on a mobile device, for example. Uh, but you can see that when you get close in, they don't look amazing. Uh, but when you're that tiny bit a distance away, they seem to make a bit more sense. And that's sort of that stylized approach. So lots of people ask me sort of about the contract itself and how much I'm getting paid, which I, I don't feel comfortable sharing how much I'm getting paid. But um, I, I'm happy to talk about uh, certain aspects of that. But it's fairly straightforward, really. I was contacted uh, by um, the team and they asked me to do these things and I'm doing them and getting paid. <laughs> it's sort of fairly straightforward, really. One thing I would say is uh, the communication is good and uh, that's um, as important as you, well, not quite as important, but almost as important as your artistic skill as being able to communicate with people and understand what they're asking for, for one, uh, get as many references from them as you can, so you know the art style that they're looking for, uh, and uh, sort of clear guidance to them if they don't know art. Uh, in this case, they do, obviously, but uh, I've had clients that don't know much about the process, so I'm trying to inform them of what the process is in order for them to understand how long things are going to take and how much they're going to cost, that sort of thing. But I do have a blog about those sort of things, so uh, there is a playlist as well, um, and just search my channel um, for those different things. Uh, I, I like talking about those, I find them very interesting. I think um, I missed that when I was first trying to find freelance work and it was quite difficult. Uh, so um, I'm trying to sort of fill in where I feel there was a gap anyway. There might not be so much anymore, but when I first started it was quite tough. You can see that I'm not putting much effort into sides that aren't going to be seen or you'd have to go to a really awkward angle to see them. So uh, there's less detail going into those. So the underside of this um, canopy, I suppose it is, a wooden canopy roof. <laughs> it's a roof really, not a canopy. Uh, but you can see that I'm not putting much detail into that because it's very unlikely the player will see that and uh, it's just sort of going to be a sort of blurry blob, uh, which still looks fine from uh, the, a distance. Uh, but yeah, there's pointless putting too much detail into these things at times. So you can see I've just sort of repeated that um, the wooden shape around and I've set my center point in the middle of the circle and then just rotate it around and put them into position. And you can see I'm sort of highlighting the different colors. The, this I'm using the blend mode of color, uh, which, I, which I'm absolutely loving is I can just sort of adapt the color slightly and change it uh, without changing the detail. So I don't have to paint in uh, blue lines, uh, darker blue, lighter blue, I can just press the color, use the fill 
um, color blend mode and it retains that uh, the highlights uh, and details so that's great one of the things that I'm finding quite enjoyable about the process is the amount of different objects that I get to paint. So you can see the sort of banners up the top there. And painting cloth was quite interesting, so I had to do a bit of research on the best way to do that in a stylized way. I have got a sort of artistic background, but um, in terms of the stylized aspects, uh, that's something that I've had to work on quite a lot um, over the past few years. Uh, because when you go to art school or whatever it was, in fact, um, I in terms of the artwork I'm only really uh, educated to A level level which here is uh, sort of 16 to 18 so it's that sort of middle point between sort of high school and university. Uh, my university degree was actually in media studies uh, but I would have loved to have done games design if there was anything about games design around at the time but there wasn't. So most of this is self-taught really with the stylized stuff. It's quite hard uh, to do that but um, it, it's difficult to say whether art college prepares you for that or not. I've seen lots of different debates about that. Uh, most are saying it's not worth going to college, which is interesting, uh, but I can understand why people still go to college, uh, because uh, it's that sort of time to dedicate yourself to that subject. And you can kind of take it in your own direction, really, and do sort of gamey art if you want to. But I'd probably do a more games design art-based course if that's what you want to get into. Hopefully that makes sense, but I'll probably do a, a blog post on that at some point as well. So do let me know if you are interested in those sort of things. Um, I do um, quite interested to talk about them myself and uh, discuss these issues. I have already discussed that in a blog post actually, whether it's worth going to university or not. Uh, and those are just my thoughts, of course, and my opinions. Uh, but you can have a look at those if you're uh, making those decisions yourselves. Some people have been asking me why am I not using Substance Painter to paint and um, other tools like that. Well one, they, they cost money and two, I've got a YouTube channel about Blender so I'm trying to stick to uh, the Blender as much as possible. It might be a slightly slower workflow but I think generally speaking because I know the ins and outs of it, it's working fine for me in terms of speed. Uh, but I can understand that other tools might be a bit better. It's a bit like those people that use Photoshop and they only use uh, one layer to paint on. It seems crazy but it's just the way they do it and they seem to get good results with it uh, because that's what they're used to and maybe they've been using Photoshop for years when it only had a sort of much less processing power and things on the computers uh, so doing things in layers isn't uh, suitable for them. Uh, it's a more sort of traditional way of doing things I suppose. Um, it would be nice uh, to move on a bit and perhaps have a go with Substance Painter a bit more and I certainly will do that in the future. I've had a bit of a go with it, uh, but nowhere near enough uh, to really play. Uh, Substance Painter, as I see it, is more sort of for procedural textures uh, rather than texture painting anyway, so I'm sure there's probably other better tools out there, but I, I'm really hoping that Blender's going to work on the texture painting a bit because things like layers, it would be nice if they sorted that out so there's a bit quicker process to it. You can see that I've uh, labelled the different uh, objects so I know uh, what I'm baking and where I'm baking them to and I get two different maps up. But this baking process, like I say, is uh, a little bit time consuming but I couldn't see any other way to do it without having to repaint uh, each of the colours. Uh, so rather than repaint them I just bake them and then use the colour blend uh, profile on the brush yeah, with the fill button obviously. Uh, so that worked quite well. Uh, but it is, uh, like I say, again, a bit time consuming. I think I found that I had a bit of texture space as well, so I could do uh, three different pieces of wood, I think it is. Might have only done two in the end, uh, but just for variation. But uh, if you can, you've got enough space, then if you're doing a modular approach like this, then doing, uh, let's say, two planks of wood or three planks of wood uh, is going to give you more variation across your model when you repeat them. Uh, so if you look at my uh, bridge over the river uh, or bridge over the stream scene uh, then uh, you can see that I uh, created like four different blocks I think it was, uh, three different stones uh, just so that when you're adding them around you rotate them and move them about uh, but if you've got three different ones then it looks like they're all different especially when like I say they're rotated and scaled. Now you can see here it's taking me a fair bit of time to sort out the different colours I'm having to go through and uh, bake different textures into the map. Uh, it's, it was quite awkward actually this uh, process. So um, yeah, so I had to bake the textures onto the different panels and different pieces of wood and then give them a different separate color. And it, it was an awkward process. So this is a, a second map and I'm repositioning 
uh, the textures so that they can bake into different places. Uh, because uh, it's if I've repeated a texture, I need to then repeat it and then recolor it. It's a difficult one to describe and uh, you, you kind of have to just do it to understand it and uh, you need to know a bit about baking and obviously I've got tutorials on that <laughs> which you can hope I've hopefully remember to put a link in the description uh, or a card in the corner at the moment. I sometimes forget but it's quite easy to search my channel you just go onto my channel press the search channel option and type in something like baking and it should come up. Uh, it's, it's quite an awkward thing baking in Blender I'm not sure whether other programs do it better, but like I say, Blender is advancing quite quickly, so hopefully we'll see something in the near future which will help us out in that regard. Hopefully I haven't gone overboard talking about baking too much because it can be a bit dull really. That's the sort of dull part of texture painting when you're trying to copy stuff from one location to the other on your UV map, so it can be a bit of a pain. So you can see all the different colours uh, that I'm playing around with here and you can see the final result of all five of them uh, just there. Uh, please again with how they turned out, uh, so having lots of fun still. So again, uh, do let me know of any thoughts you have or any ideas and uh, let me know, comment below if you're still all the way to the end of this video, still with me here. Uh, that would be lovely to know. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.